All right, so let's get started with this video. So I look a little weird. I know I'm wearing like an awesome outfit for graduation, even though I graduated in 2019. Can't tell from my little sash. I'm gonna actually be sharing with you guys my journey and how I got to where I wanted to be in life because my story is a little bit different than a lot of people's. I was a never a straight A student. In college, I was never a straight A student. So I'm gonna be teaching you guys kind of like my little journey in life and what I did. Elementary school, you know, I did pretty good. Middle school chimed in a little bit and I still did pretty good in school. I don't remember what those grades were. I should probably find them somewhere, but I don't remember. But basically part of this video is I'm gonna be teaching you guys how I became a medical laboratory scientist without a 4.0 GPA and how I graduated college without a 4.0 GPA and how I landed a pretty decent job. I'm very happy with what's going on in life right now. And I work in STEM, so can't complain. And if you guys want to see what I did and maybe you're interested in working in STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math or anything that you desire, please continue watching this video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I post every Tuesday and let's get started with the video. I have my water ready. Guys, get some snacks. I'm gonna be talking about high school and how high school was for me. So in high school, I first started off as a freshman. I actually did a course in fashion. So I knew I loved fashion, makeup, beauty. That's something I've always been interested in. As well as school, like I always really enjoyed science. I enjoyed math, I enjoyed reading. I loved English. English was one of my favorite classes. But originally when I started high school, I thought I wanted to work in the beauty industry or within fashion because that's something that really piqued my interest. But around my junior year, is when I kind of had a little transitionary period where, you know, things happened within high school and my life that I felt like I wanted to pursue something that I knew I can support myself with. I decided I wanted to pursue a career in the sciences because it's something I've always been interested in, but I was always a little bit discouraged because of the fact that in high school when I first started off, I didn't do too well. I think my first year of high school, my GPA was probably like at a 3.0 just because I wasn't really paying attention very much. I didn't know kind of how to navigate high school. And I felt like it would be just as easy as you know, elementary and middle school, which it wasn't. It took a little bit more work and also just, you know, dealing with different things in life. I didn't really do the best my freshman year. And I was never in, you know, honors or AP classes starting off. Like, no, I was not. When I was in middle school to give me that, you know, leg up and be able to kind of challenge myself and grow academically, but I wasn't given that opportunity. So what I did was like, once I hit my junior year, I decided for myself that I wanted to take on more difficult courses. I took AP courses and I knew I wanted to go into science and the medical field. I knew that's something I wanted to really do because I've always had a passion for that. I've always been really interested in it since I was little, but like I said, you know, my grades are kind of discouraging me a little bit. And plus the fact that I was never really placed in those classes and given those opportunities like other students in order to really grow my potential until I actually seeked it out myself. So my junior year of high school is when I took AP English because I always loved English. My teacher didn't grade one of my assignments because she left, she got pregnant and she left. And I ended up getting to see in that class. I'm like, okay. The second semester I did way better. I had a different teacher. And I don't know if she watches my videos, but Miss Polly, if you're here, hey, how are you? I hope everything's going well. Let me know if you want me to come talk to your students. I would love to do that. If you guys are still having classes, of course. But I want to share with you that I still like struggled in being in those classes. And I think I took maybe like an honors class or two. I really don't know. It wasn't the work that was hard for me. It was just the fact that I felt like I wasn't smart enough to be there. My senior year is when I decided to take statistics, AP, and English again, but I don't think I passed either AP course because I didn't really know how to study for them. So yeah, as you can tell from the narrative of my story, studying for tests has always been kind of tricky for me because I felt like I never really got taught very well how to study. If you weren't in honors or AP classes, these things aren't really taught to you. You kind of had to like figure them out yourself or you either like fell behind and you weren't really taught those skills that you needed to know in order to be successful in college if you decided to pursue college. So that's why I think it was really hard for me to kind of conquer test taking, which it still kind of is for me too. So I graduated high school. Yay, graduation day. I graduated with a 3.4, I want to say in high school. I didn't make the top 10%. I think I was on like the probably the top 20th percentile of my class, which is still really good. Don't get me wrong, but I think the fact that, you know, my freshman year was really hard. It was kind of transitionary. You know, I turned that around all my other years. I actually did really good, 
my last couple years of school even though i did get a couple c's and you know c's are okay a lot of people think like oh my gosh you need to get straight a's like no you really don't need to get straight a's yes it is way better because schools are getting so much more competitive let's go into college let's take a sip of water and we're gonna go into college so college oh my gosh i did even worse my freshman year of college than I did my freshman year of high school. My freshman year of high school, I got a 3.0, which is about right. I think I got somewhere around a 3.0 my first semester. First semester of college, guess what I got? I got a 2.4 GPA. Why did I get a 2.4 GPA? So big thing, I tried to rush a sorority. Why did it not go through? Um, did not go through because college was hard in the beginning. I had way too many courses. I had about 18 credit hours. And then with the sorority, they tried to do everything really late at night. And I'm a person who really likes my sleep at night when I'm tired. So honestly, I wish I would have never tried to rush a sorority. It wasn't for me. I didn't want to be placed in a group where I felt like I had to be friends with someone. And it kind of felt forced in a way. I feel like I'm a very go with the flow type of person. I don't really like rules or boundaries. And being part of sorority, there's a lot of rules and a lot of boundaries. And a lot of things you have to follow. And for me, they didn't really make sense for me to be part of a group where you kind of feel like you have to follow certain things in order to be friends with these groups of people. So I figured I would follow my own path and I'm really glad I did because second semester freshman year, I picked up my GPA and I got, I think about a 3.4 my second semester. You know, I didn't get a 4.0 because I was still, you know, really trying to figure out what I did wrong my freshman year and work towards that. And I took way less credit hours. I spent way more time at the library, but I still had fun, I still made friends. So my freshman year, as you can tell, I didn't get the best GPA at all. I felt very behind when I took chemistry and organic chemistry. So it was really hard for me to go and take these science classes in college. First reason being that, you know, in high school, I don't feel like I was challenged, as I've already told you. I didn't have the skills I felt like I needed to be fully prepared to take these classes and take the exams. The exams was I did the most worse in. Once I reached intro to orgo and chemistry, I had to take like three or four chemistry classes. That's when it was really hard for me. One being because I didn't feel like high school fully prepared me to take these courses in college. And two, because it was really weird coming from a fully Latino community and Latino school district and Latino high school to being one of the only Latinas in the class or Latinos in the class besides, you know, my friend Pablo and Diana, hey guys, you know, we really helped each other out with school because we're all STEM majors. But other than that, it's like, it's really hard being in classes knowing you don't see people who look like you or maybe have similar experiences with you. And you see someone who gets like 100% and then you're over here getting a 30% on an exam. Like that's really hard to deal with. And that was honestly one of the biggest things I struggled with in college was like knowing I put in so much work, but at the same time, it's like, why am I not doing it? Like, why is this not working out for me? And what can I do to change that? So what I did to kind of help me out and do a little bit better in my courses before entering into the MLS program, don't worry guys, we're gonna go into how I became a medical laboratory scientist, is that I tried to pursue help i got friends who wanted to study with me and i would spend lots of time at the library you guys like once i hit my sophomore year i commuted and i spent tons and tons of time in the library because i knew i wanted to get my gpa up in order for me to go into being a medical laboratory scientist so i spent hours on my books i spent so much time i would work out too but i did a lot and i would study and we always took our stuff and i would take snacks and i just wanted to make sure i was around people who supported me in my goals and I could support them in their goals and we can kind of, you know, help each other out and do what we need to do in order to get where we want to be in life. If you're someone who's like in high school now or college watching my videos, like find that really good support system of people. Honestly, go to your lab TAs. They help so much, probably more than the professors a lot of the times because they're usually younger. They're like PhD students or students going into research. Usually they're like getting their master's doctorate. And they were really helpful and a lot of them are the reason why I started doing a lot better in my science courses or you know maybe taking a different strategy was because of them like thank you so much to all my TAs I had in college you guys are awesome I don't know if you guys watch my videos or not but thank you guys so much it really helped me a lot going to tutoring sessions I always always go to tutoring because sometimes there'd be questions I didn't know how to answer so that was really helpful for me so when I applied to the MLS program at my school I applied the beginning of my sophomore year and I actually had to finish like one more course in the summer in order for me to get into the program so I was like placed on 
like probationary acceptance because I needed to finish one more course. I took it over the summer, so I did do some summer classes while I was an undergrad because if I didn't, I wouldn't have been able to graduate in my four years. So yeah, I took summer classes most summers, except I think my junior year, because I did research. And my senior year, obviously not, because I graduated, so no. But I was able to take classes and I got into the program, which was really awesome. So my program consisted of me taking hematology, chemistry, blood bank, urinalysis and body fluids, and immunology. So I took all of those courses during my first year, junior year, and they're really challenging and my classes were really hard. I took a lot of time to study and I found really good friends and that really helped to support me and us support each other in order to make sure that we got really good grades and did well in the program. The reason why I wanted to work as a medical laboratory scientist is because I always really had an interest in science, like I told you guys I did in high school. And I knew I wanted to work in medicine, but I didn't want to be a nurse. To be honest with you, the real reason why I did not want to be a nurse is because I did not want to clean up after people. Like, that's just being really honest. And that's really why I didn't want to become a nurse. Like, I really like the aspect. I think it's really cool. But I just knew I couldn't do that. Not that there's anything wrong with it. And I really respect everyone who does that. But for me, I knew I wanted to do something a little bit different, which involved kind of using my knowledge in order to make a difference in healthcare and treat a patient. So I wanted to do something within the laboratory. And how I did that was my freshman year. I'm gonna go a little bit back. I found out about how to become a medical laboratory scientist through my school's involvement fair, where they show clubs and sports that are on campus. And I found the MLS club which is Medical Laboratory Science Club, and that's kind of how I got introduced into the field. And I knew right from then and there that that's exactly what I wanted to do. And so uh, once I was in my program, you know, everything's super good. And my senior year, we kind of had a clinical rotations and we had to do exams for each subject. So that was pretty challenging too, because I did my clinical rotations. I did it at a level one trauma hospital. I did at Loyola University Medical Center. It's in Maywood, Illinois. And yeah, it was a really big hospital. The lab is huge, so many different sections of the lab. I was in all areas. There's special chemistry, core lab, which involved, you know, heme, not micro, micro is its own separate section. It involved hematology, and involved urinalysis and body fluids, as well as chemistry. There we go, chemistry. And blood bank was its own separate section too. I had some flow cytometry as well. Clinicals were really scary, but if you guys are watching this and you guys are actually in your clinical lab or medical lab program, tr trust me guys, it's not that bad. Just make sure you study. It's not as challenging as they make it seem when you're in the classroom, so don't worry, try to relax. Get to know the people you work with and your experience will be really good. But let your professors at school know because there's usually a liaison who kind of takes care of everything between the students and the clinical site. So just know there's people there for you. While we had clinicals, we had to take classes and exams every week. For me, that was really hard because I was always really busy. And I almost didn't pass my hematology one because I thought hematology was really hard. I found it difficult as well in school and what we did. It didn't really pertain to kind of to like what I was learning in clinicals. In clinicals, I feel like that's where I learned a ton of my knowledge, not really in the classroom setting surprisingly, but clinicals is where I really learned because I got to really see so many more cells than I ever got to see at school. But see, they let us redo our work if we didn't pass something, which was really awesome. And you know, they only give you a certain amount of chances, obviously, but that's only one I really ever did bad in. But just know that these classes are hard. They're difficult. They're meant to kind of weed out people, you know, within like, you know, Orgo 1 and 2, chemistry, physics, any science or math class that's really hard, they're meant to like weed people out to not go into the sciences. But just know that, you know, if you talk to your professors and teachers and get that support like I did, you can really power through and make it through. Because I always thought I wasn't smart enough and even getting help with heme or to my junior year, um, no, not a junior, my senior, I'm like, oh shoot, if I don't pass, I'm not gonna graduate. But I did get help, yeah, I got to retake it. I actually ended up studying way more. I ended up passing, which was really awesome. So we have reached graduation, yay! I ended up graduating with about like a 3.1 GPA. I'm not afraid to say that because it goes to show you that even though I graduated with 3.1 GPA, which is not the best, honestly, like I wish I could, I wish I could have got at least like a 3.5, like that would have been my ideal. But you know, things are difficult. College is difficult, life is difficult. 
people are busy. I was super busy in college. And just know that even though you don't get the highest GPA, you still are able to get a job. I don't want you to feel like you're discouraged from pursuing your dreams if you don't get a 4.0 GPA, because if I'm able to do it, you're able to do it as well. But for the most part, try to get a really good GPA. Try to get like above a 3.3. But honestly, you know, make sure you enjoy your time in college. Make sure you enjoy your time in life because life is very short. Grades do mean a lot, but they're not everything. They don't make up who you are. And for me, I was still able to get a job as a clinical laboratory scientist, even though I only had like a, like a 3.1, 3.2 GPA because of the fact that I was really involved in school and I had a lot of leadership schools. Like I was a president of a club in college. I was e-board members of a couple clubs. I was a mentor. I was also involved in community service throughout my whole time in college. So it's not only the fact that your grades make up who you are, it's also kind of how you are as a person, how you develop yourself and the skills you can contribute to a workplace in order for them to see that you are a valuable asset to their workplace. I had two job interviews once I applied for a job as a medical laboratory scientist, which I did around like the end of 2019. So maybe around like October, November of 2019, all before COVID-19 hit. I had one job interview, my first job interview. I actually really liked the lab, it was really cool. And I liked the fact that it kind of held like all aspects of it. And it was more of a smaller laboratory. So I really liked that. And my second job interview is a job I actually hold now. I really like the environment and lab. And they saw the potential in me that I knew I had because they saw how much, they saw my leadership skills and where I did my clinicals at. And even though I didn't have a 3.2 GPA, they never even asked me about my GPA. They asked me more about my experiences, what I've done within science and my interests and working in the laboratory. And that's what really stood out to them and made me land my job that I have now. So it just goes to show you that you don't need to have a super high GPA in order to get a job when you graduate college. It really matters more about your experience and kind of how you present yourself to your future employer while you're doing interviews and showing that you're responsible, you're a leader, you are willing to learn and work and do your best. I, even though they didn't ask me about my GPA, I did explain to them kind of you know why I did struggle a little bit in my undergraduate career, but they understood because everything in the lab can be learned. Any job, if you guys feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not smart enough, you can really do it. It's honestly really possible. Take a notebook. If you forget things like me, take a notebook, write things down. Don't be discouraged. Ask people for help. They are there to help you. They're there for you to succeed. And they're there for you to grow and work within that environment in order for you to perform your job. So that's my little long video of how I became a medical laboratory scientist. And I guess kind of my little journey and story of how I was never a 4.0 student and I probably will never be and it's still landing me where I wanted to be in life. And I still would love to pursue school. Maybe if I earn some more money, I can pay for my school later on in the future if I want to pursue a master, doctor, whatever I want to pursue. So thank you guys again so much for watching this video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay updated when I post. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any questions for me, if you guys want to know like what can you do to improve your GPA if you're in a spot where like, oh my gosh, it's not good, but I still want to work within science or any other life advice you guys want to ask me. I'm totally here for you guys. I try to be really, really good with answering questions in a timely manner. And I apologize if I can't answer like follow-up questions because sometimes I don't get the notifications on my YouTube. So I do apologize for that. If I, you know, take a long time to answer, I don't see them right away because sometimes I have to go like dig through and find them. So yes, thank you guys again so much. Make sure that you drink water, it's hot outside. And I'll see you again here soon. Oh, 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 oh